And in business, recent data by S&P revised Nigeria from a stable to negative economy. We also have seen that with a population size of over 200 million people, we in recent times have seen our foreign direct investment also decline, with Ghana, for example, attracting more FDIs. Now joining me in the studio live here is Michael Famoruti of, C of Stairs NG. Thank you so much for joining me. Pleasure to be here this morning. Yes. Regarding the reports by S&P, does it bother you a lot when you saw that Nigeria was moved from a stable economy to, you know, downward trend, having it as negative? Well, yeah, I mean, it's not a good sign. Um, now all three major ratings companies um, have us in, I guess, negative or junk territory. Um, it is a symptom of what's going on, right? I think the biggest impacts really have been on the oil price, which mm. is a very important external gauge of the health of our economy, right? So, yes, we've seen some recent gains this week, but generally the outlook is quite negative for oil prices. Um, when you also understand that a lot of our FX market is dependent on short-term investment, um, and those may dwindle as people become more uncertain and move to safer um, yeah. fixed income things, mm -hmm. then you understand why the ratings company would expect um, things to look a bit worse over the next three to six months on the investment side. Um, so it is unfortunate, but at the same time, it's not particularly so surprising giving the hits to all prices. I mean, I'm talking about FX. We also see that we have our reserves dropping you know, massively. What impact would this potentially have on our economic stability moving forward? Yes, yeah, so the reserves are, are a very important um, feature because they underpin the current FX strategy, right? Of course. Which put simply is a fixed exchange rate that the CBN defends using its reserves. Um, I would have been worried about the reserves, particularly with the drop in the oil price, but at the same time, it looks like the federal government is going to borrow about $3 billion, um, which automatically sort of boosts your reserves. Eventually, though, the chickens will come home to roost because when you strip <laughs> out the dollar debts we have from our reserves, whether you're talking about OMO bills or euro bonds, then you find that our reserves are somewhere around $20 billion, not $40 Which is billion. certainly not encouraging for a country of Exactly. Size. Right. So I expect the CBN and the government to keep trying to see ways of plugging the reserves gap. Um, but if all prices drop, too low, perhaps we're talking about 40, $45 for a prolonged period, then we may be forced to actually see actually, are they able to defend this currency? Um, and I expect that the answer might be no. Now, something else that may you know, bother some is the fact that our foreign direct investment for a country of this size, like I said before, is below $1 billion. What mm. does this say of a country like ours, particularly to foreign investors? Yeah, so for me, the most interesting thing about foreign direct investment is I mean, from Q1 to Q3 of last year, it was at $663 yeah. million. Dollars. Yeah. Uh, if you look at the last 10 years, right, if you combine FDI for the last 10 years, you get something like $7 billion has come in, right, um, in foreign direct investment to Nigeria over a 10-year period. And this is NBS data, right? So it is a long-term trend. It is a trend that we've been seeing for a long time, and it just shows that there isn't long-term confidence in the infrastructure mm. and policy stability, right? Um, mm. People will bring in their money when they expect to make short-term gains, but when the um, challenge is to come in here, set up a business or a factory, and stay here and make long-term profits, then it's much less attractive, right? Mm. And that speaks to addressing your infrastructure and institutions, which we are yet to properly do, right? Uh, there's no way around that problem apart from you know addressing those two things. How would this affect our businesses in the country? Well, um, one positive, right, that you would say is in the absence of foreign investments, then perhaps local businesses can, you know, grow, mm -hmm. set up and thrive, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. The reality is though that the, is that the same environment that is scaring away the foreign investors is the same environment that is, you know, 
squeezing the local businesses, right? I mean, we can pick up different examples from the Lagos State of Kadaban to what we've seen with Uber now in terms of the taxes that are being imposed. Mm -hmm. um, you can bring up corruption, you can talk about security, you can talk about infrastructure. Um, the reality is, you know, it's not a good environment for businesses. And I think the best way of summing that up is by pointing out that the MBS um, last calculated that there are about 40 million small businesses in the country. In the country. Right. Only 70,000 of those employ more than 10 staff. So everybody else is a one-man shop, essentially. You cannot grow an economy based on one-man shops, right? Um, and that's the reality we're in. All right, thank you so much for your time. Thanks for joining us. Because of time, this is all we can have. Thank you so much. Okay. Pleasure as always. Certainly. Thank you.